Eden Zero Chapter 292 is out, and this is the second to last chapter of Eden Zero, and man, was it an emotional one. We got a lot of cool, wholesome moments, some great progression of the story going towards its actual conclusion, and the ending of this chapter will have you bawling your eyes out, as it is definitely one of the most emotional moments in this section of the story. But we'll get to that. Before we jump right into things, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for updates on future videos. It really helps, and it shows you guys enjoy the content I make here on the channel, and it shows you want to see more. Just one more chapter of Eden Zero, and then that is it. The story is concluded. Upside, the next chapter next week, chapter 293, is going to be about 46 pages, so it's going to be a double-length chapter. So there is definitely going to be a lot to be included within that chapter, so I'm very much looking forward to it. But with that out of the way, let's jump right into the second to last chapter of Eden Zero. We cut to Earth as we get a landscaping shot of a city and the ocean. As we see people at the beach and somebody surfing. As we see Yuna, the human that Valkyrie was based off of during the 20,000 year flashback when Ziggy made the four shining stars. As Yuna gets back to the beach, someone calls out her name. As it is Valkyrie meeting her human counterpart for the very first time. As we also cut to the hospital where Ivory is, reco is recovering from her illness, as Sister walks into her, as she's essentially dumbfounded and confused that there is another version of her. But Sister says, Some illnesses may be beyond your planet's medical capacity, but I can cure anything. And that is a very big truth. Sister, really good doctor. Well, healer, among other things. We also move over to a courthouse where Witch meets Regret, her human counterpart. As Regret is being told that Witch is from the future. But Witch says, to be more precise, I'm an android that was designed on you from the future. Now, yeah, obviously the whole from the future thing is, does need to be clarified one more time just in case someone sees this video and is confused. Shiki used the chronophage to eat Mother's time from 20,000 years, reverting it back to planet Earth many years before it would eventually overdrive into Mother for obvious reasons due to the planet Earth basically running through its resources and basically dying with the extinction of the human race. But since we are still in current day in Eden Zero, the planet Earth is back to 20,000 years in the past. Little, little confusing, but with the context, it actually makes plenty of sense. But Regret asks, you can't expect me to believe this, right? Which says here, look at this, and presents a cube. As we then cut to Hermit meeting Mio, her human counterpart. As Hermit says, this is your planet's future a few years from now. You do manage to get the planet into overdrive, but the human race will still go extinct. And then there's Killer's human counterpart who, for the life of me, I keep forgetting his name. That's how much he, I, don't, I just don't like him. Just re responds to just seeing two Mios there. Mio asks her, so what can we do to stop it? As Hermit just smirks, stating, we have technology that is much more advanced than anything your planet science is capable of. As Valkyrie basically says, hmm, we have a device that normalizes ether. Not that I have, I have any idea how it works, as Yuna is shocked to know that such a thing can exist. In a pretty comedic panel, both uh, versions of Yuna and Valkyrie are just like, huh, why was I designed after a surfer? As Yuna says, and if you're going to go there, why would an android based on me turn into a swordsman? Which honestly is, I find still kind of funny, because for the most part, these characters are relatively not the exact same people. But Southern characteristics, like with Hermit and even Witch, to an extent, are still similar to their human counterparts, so I still find it kind of funny. I also find Sister and Ivory's whole, whole um, uh, stare-off kind of hilarious, with Sister not really believing the fact that she would be somebody who would be sick, and Ivory being like, me a nun? Yeah, no way. But we cut back to Witch in Regret, as Witch tells her, and there you have it. With our technology, your planet can be saved. But Regret asks, why do this for us? As Witch smiles, stating, because I was designed after you. And this planet is the great Demon King's home. And like a normal person's reaction, Regret's like, wait, Demon King? Is the future some kind of fantasy world? As Witch's like, 
I probably could have worded that better. Because obviously Shiki is from Earth, the sole survivor of Earth from 20,000 years ago, and Mother thanks to Ziggy's interference, him surviving, we got the Shining Stars, and the whole Eden Zero story. But as the two of them are interacting, we then get uh, Leonard, Wizard's human, human counterpart, calling out to Regret as he walks over. But after which Re recognizes who he is, she turns away as Leonard asks, who are you talking to, to Regret? And as Witch is going away, she smiles and says, I hope your baby is happy and healthy. Now, obviously, Witch, most likely, after learning the truth, does have some big conflicting feelings and sadness over the fact that she literally killed Wizard, who, in her past life, was her husband. So, yeah, definitely going to be a lot of conflicting emotions, but definitely some resolution seeing her past self or the person that she was based off of basically being happy and healthy and together. So... I find that kind of nice and honestly really wholesome and sweet. But we then get a bit of a montage of the earth where the buildings are kind of collapsed and dead trees, but over time grow back into cities and the plant life grows to be even more robust and a lot more healthy. As we cut to 16 years later, as we cut to Yuna's lab, as she says, it's been 16 years. All thanks to those androids in the future, our Aether Observation Center has really expanded. As we also get an image of Mio as an adult now, working in Yuna's lab. And also an image of Ivory working as a nurse in the hospital. As the Earth is now safe. With Yuna stating, That reminds me, your son's going back to school today, right? As the person on the phone, who is Regret, states, Yeah, he's starting high school. They grow up so fast. As we cut to somebody walking to, into the gate of a school, who is obviously Shiki, walking through the front gate as a girl is using her phone and a selfie stick to potentially do a, to do a selfie. As the two of them bump into each other, it's revealed that this person is also Rebecca, or at least Earth's version of Rebecca. And the two of them lock eyes, as Shiki apologizing, but Rebecca says, nah, it was my fault. As the two of them confirm that they're both going to the exact same school, and they start talking, someone comes out and calls Rebecca's sister, and hands her the lunch that she forgot, as we see a little girl who looks just like Pino. So it seems obviously what I thought and what others thought of Pino being reborn seems to have come true. And as Rebecca's little sister nonetheless, which I find really appropriate and also a lot more adorable. Rebecca grabs her food from the from little Pino as Shiki stares at her for a second and Rebecca introduces them. Shiki introduces himself as Shiki and Pino says, nice to meet you, master, which kind of confuses and freaks out Shiki as Rebecca says, eh, she's been watching some weird cartoons lately as Shiki smiles. As Pino says, anyway, if you two are okay with it, Will you be my friends as we then transition back to the present with Shiki covered in wounds from his battle, clutching Arpino in his arms, crying his eyes out with Pino's last words being master. Good night. Ending the chapter. Well, if you didn't tear up reading this section of the story, you have no soul and I do not want to speak with you because later Jujimi, Majima, you had the balls not only to kill off Pino, you fully confirm it, making it the last page of the chapter after teasing us with Pino seemingly getting what she wished for, being reborn as a human on Earth. So, you got the ball, you got a lot of balls for playing with the reader's emotions like that. And man, was it just a masterclass in doing this. Legitimately, I did not expect so quickly for the Shining Stars to go to Earth and basically share their information on how to do Aether and how to use it to help the planet and then meeting their former counterparts, which I like their interactions with just Herman and Mio basically being like science nerds, Yuna and Valkyrie just looking at their contrasts. Same with Sister and Ivory, but Regret and Witch kind of having a bit of a more normal conversation. And finally, just the last section of the story where the version of Shiki that was born on Earth, who isn't our Shiki, is going to high school, meets Earth's version of Rebecca, as we see Pino reborn as re this version of Rebecca's little sister. 
So even in this new timeline, this new Earth, these three characters will know each other and are the closest out of anybody in this series. And Pino coming back as Rebecca's younger sister on Earth makes a lot of sense. I also found it kind of fun and interesting that we basically had another version of Rebecca on Earth, which could potentially mean that Rebecca would have originally been born on Earth, if not for time travel shenanigans and the overdrives and stuff like that. So that is a possibility. But man, what a wholesome and then heartbreaking chapter for this week of Eden Zero. Like I said, next week is the final chapter of the series. It's going to be 46 pages. We're going to get a color page, a color spread. And we're going to wrap up the story with our characters, with the aftermath of Pino's death. And we'll see how things fully conclude. Also, really quick, apparently Mashima is going to announce in a, a new series. So it'll either be something brand new and original or it'll be a continuation of another series. It'd be really cool, in my opinion, if he, while he ended off the main story of Eden Zero, he had some ideas from Eden Zero that he couldn't put in the main story but decided to make into an entirely different series for Eden Zero. Who knows, maybe a prequel with Xenolith and the Dark Ages and the origins of Aether Gear. That'd be pretty cool. But for now, that's all I'm really going to say on the matter. Eden Zero ends next week. We had a heartbreaking chapter two weeks in a row, and now the story is finally reaching its conclusion. What would you guys think of this chapter? How do you feel about Eden Zero ending? How do you feel about the death of Pino, who is literally the heart and soul of Eden Zero? And what do you think is going to be next for Mashima and his new series? Do you think Eden Zero could potentially come back with a prequel or even a sequel? Let me know in the comment section down below. And if you haven't already, like and subscribe and hit the notification bell for updates on future videos. It really helps and it shows you guys enjoy the content I'm making on the channel and shows you want to see more. I'll also notify you when I cover the very last chapter of Eden Zero and for this long journey to finally come to an end. With all that said and done, I hope you all have an awesome day.